we all know how much picture framing costs and mounting. I've shown you how to do mounts and I have shown you how tinting frames as well. I'm um, going back to that for the moment. Last frame cost me over £90. This one I've just bought the wood for £20 and with a few panel pins and a bit of spare acrylic I should be able to make quite a nice little frame. What I've done is taken some ordinary picture rail. Um, now the wood that I know to use for this you can either use architraving which is like this. You can see the cross section of it here. Now that will make a nice frame because we can put this piece underneath it like this which will then leave a the effect of a rebate here for the painting to slot underneath. So I've got some ordinary uh, rectangular wood and you can use either picture rail or architraving or even skirting board if it comes to it as long as you've got this nice pattern on it you see and usually we have the large piece at the back of the frame and the smaller piece at the front. So going like this with it we make that sort of cross section. So when that's fitted together and it looks like that then that will just slot over the painting like this. It gives you an idea of how that works. So it's a bit less here so we bring that further forward so it looks more like that. You can see how that's going to work now. Some architraving or some picture rail will do and then some battening to go on top of that. Cut my mitre joints and now I'm just fitting these with panel pins in between to hold the painting like this. It's a very simple uh, mechanism and with the uh, ordinary picture um, clips and springs to hold it in it'll work quite well. So what I'm doing at the moment is just panel pinning in these uh, little slats at the sides to hold the painting in place. So there we are, let's pin in, and you can see now the little rebate that I've made at the back by doing the frame that way. Now the picture will fit into there, let's have a look and see if that works alright. a bit close up here, but we should be okay. That was a rather nice one I did. The uh, scene and the little cruise. I'm just going to slot into there nicely. My pins that I'm going to put on next will hold it in place. Plenty of space, just a little bit, a little bit over. I don't want it fitting exactly in because if I need to change the paintings on my slightly different canvases, then I'll need that changed slightly. And the only tools I've needed have been this mitre saw and a jigsaw, uh, little hammers, panel pins. That's it really. A bit of sandpaper, and they're finished in a minute. Now I need to put the clips on. And what we're going to need to finish off are two little D rings. That's these little fellas and the screws will go with them and they're going to go on the edge of the uh, frame here for the string, a bit of braided nylon for that so I'll just put those to one side there and then also these, I use these lovely little fellas uh, screws are there, these spring clips and you can see them like that look they go on like this and you screw them down and they the tension down onto the painting so if you ever need to move it you can just twist those around and your painting comes out very very quickly and very very easily so we'll do that next there we go then just slide around on there and hold the canvas in all right we'll just get these D-rings on and last screw to go into this. And then what we're going to do is string them up and we'll take the canvas out and just finish sanding up and uh, then we'll be ready to prime in the art room. Right, there we are then. And so the D-rings are on, the strings are on. And we just undo these clips. It's as easy as this. Like this. So I can easily put it back in again. If I ever want to change paintings, and it's so easy to do this way. And the canvas will just lift out like that. And there's our frame ready to go, ready to be sanded up and then primed up and painted. Back in the uh, conservatory again, or the studio now, there's our frame made. We'll take the painting out of the way and we're going to give it a base coat of black. This canvas has a protective sheet over it at the moment, so I can use that as a, as a base rather than take it from the table. 
There's all sorts of different ways you could paint these um, by using washes and sponges and wonderful effects you can get. But in this case, I just want to get a nice black base coat. In this case, I'm using an ocean, plenty of it. There we are, then, nice black frame, and let that dry off now before we start putting any other coats on. Let's go back to our framing now, it's dried a bit in the evening, but I'm just taking a silver spray, just going around the inside edge of the frame with a silver spray, letting it just blend onto the outer edge. That'll do it. Well, I haven't wanted the outer, well, I the inner edge of this um, frame silver, so I'm now going to just come back over and just carefully re spray the outer edge of it so that the inner edge remains silver. And now I can do my other colours over the top in a minute. I'll carefully come right round at this angle and re spray the outer edge. muffled effect. I do need the inner edge. Oh. Next thing you'll note when we look at this frame is that we've got recesses, so we've got pieces that go down and up. And if we put paint on top of this and wipe it off, we're wiping off the surface so the undercolour will come through, or we're leaving it in the recesses. So if I want something left in these recesses, I can paint it in and just wipe over the surface with the sponge. And that's the effect we're going to go for. So I want to go for a, a deep bluey green on the outside of here, which will just glow, will let the dark glow through it. I want to get a nice golden ochre coming through into here and round here on this, on this side into the darks as well and letting the silver just glow through. So I'm going to start off with um, my dark greeny blue and let that come right the way around here, sponging it away from here and then I'm going to put in my um, yellow into, into the recess here. So which way around to do that? I suspect actually, um, yes we're better using the deep, the deep green blue first and then when that's dried off and correct I'll put the yellow in and just wipe it away again and we'll see how we get on. So let's make up that mix first. Remember you need enough paint to do the job in one go. Trying to mix the same colour again is very, very difficult. So all the tools I'm going to need for this are a brush and a sponge. I'm going to use my nice big wash brush for this one. It doesn't want to be too soft or too hard. It's just a nice consistency. A little mixing tray here. And we're going to be using glazes. My sponge is ready as well. So um, I, 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 I don't want to make too much paint, but just make sure I've got enough. So you want a nice, nice deep greeny, blue green. We'll take some uh, ultramarine. That should be nice. A bit of wadge of ultramarine, a bit of water. A nice thin mixture. Don't want any blobs in it, so to make sure there's no lumps. It's going to be absolutely perfectly mixed. Take some sap green, mix that in, which shouldn't be far out now. Make sure it's really well mixed. And the frame that I'm going to do, um, I've been looking online for one that I like, and that one seems to be a nice one. I don't see who it's made by, but we're looking at 11 to 12 pound a, a metre on that, so you can imagine the saving I'm going to have doing it my way. So I'm going to now bring that right the way across this part of the moulding and just across here and wipe it away gently. I'm going to use it fairly thinly so I'll put a bit more water in. Let's give that a testing gun on it and we'll see. It's too thick at the moment so take that down a bit with a bit more water. Fill it out with the brush here and there we go that's just perfect. So right the way along this outer edge. Whatever you do make sure you do it the same on the whole frame. So we'll bring that glaze of this colour all the way along here, right the way around, so it's not too thin and certainly isn't too thick that we lose the dark underneath, right the way around there 
and make sure your brush marks are nice and even so it's a nice even brush stroke so with the, the actual brush marks and we don't want this to dry yet so I'm just making sure it's a nice even and there's only just enough paint there that time but it'll be enough for me to do the job so on the whole frame from the corner right around now this is where we start to get a bit more technique because I'm now going to add a bit more water to it and uh, thin that right down so it is just a glaze I want to bring that around this inside edge of this silver now it's going to, because of so much water and there's an acrylic spray underneath it's already dry this should go mottled it should just let that silver glue through and the more that I brush it on the more it dries the less that mottling will happen but what we want to get now is a nice effect of this evenly naturally it happens equally all the way around like this until we get it just starting to stay as a layer on there so I'm going to keep doing it until it stops reacting too much and just starts to stick to the you can see now it's just starting to totally stick we're not getting a, that mottled effect now it's nice and thin and the end of silver is just showing through that gives me a lovely effect leave it a minute in case any starts to come out again in which case you've got to go over it again but I think we'll be alright there and this is where we come back with the sponge now and we want to take away totally take away any any paint that's on the silver edge any silver any paint that's on the silver edge we don't want to touch the inner edge but we do take that away if we touch this bit up again with the silver I can see it's not quite covered if we wipe the excess off that with a tissue later see the effect we get it's rather nice and we're going to put more colours over this once that's dry so in the meantime we're going to go back to my painting while that dries off and close up here you can see the effect we're getting just make sure we wipe off any excess well that's now dry so I want to come in with this yellow ochre mix down here mix that over there now that's what I'm going to want for that um, I don't want such a big brush this time in fact I'll and to go and use the pretty brush I was using just now for painting with here on the on the major painting. Let's take some of this yellow ochre then. I'm going to go right round the inner edge of the um, of the moulding on this bead, and then I fill it out later. So let's do that. What I'm looking at now is this inner edge here. I want to deliberately get right into that with this paint and plenty of it because I want that to soak right into the to the edge of this recess to the very depths of it so we can't have too much in there really but we'll just brush it out and that has to go all the way around here so if I didn't make enough this colour isn't too bad to make because it's straight from the tube almost it's just yellow over water, oops, don't worry about that, we can lift it off again. Got to make sure that the original painting is dry though because if it isn't it's going to start lifting off at this stage and we don't want that happening. Looking right into there, so that, that floods down into that recess. Flooding down into there, dropping in 
plenty of it. And come back along and round, all the way around, making sure it's in that recess. going to just gently come over the others. So I'm going to bring it just gently across the surface of this to sponge it back in a minute. Right across here. Across these darks and the uh, edges of the blue, the blue-grey. You'll see why in just a moment. Through here, we're getting a nice effect now of the stream. So it's just dribbled down a bit on some of these bits, but it's not going to worry because we're going to sponge that off in a minute. Right across. I'm starting to get the colours that I want here now. Now, that's the important bit, we come back with the sponge. And we're going to gently blend with the sponge. Across the top, we just wipe it gently right through the surface of this frame, right across here. We'll come back a few times. So we're just taking the surface and blending it through the surface here, back down across the whole bit of that frame, all the way across here, right the way through, all the way through there again. Just let this blend across. All the way around, blending it out. And so it comes all the way across the dark and that, and that blue grey. You can see how it's working now. Right the way across here to the corners. Don't leave any dark edges. See a lovely effect with the frame. All the way down there to the silver edge. Same across here, all the way down here, across the dark, and equally into the blue. There we go. Right down into the mitre joints. That's it, look. Make sure that you keep the sponge direction all the way along the frame. And there we are, let that dry off again. And just come back with our tissues. Just to wipe any excess off the silver itself, which we don't want. Put across the silver, silver on the silver, get it off. Alright, this frame is dried now, and I'm not so happy with the finish as it is. Let's just take a look at the painting underneath this and how it will look. Um, because it may be alright as it is. I'm not, I wasn't certain about the silver, but uh, let's see now. Just slide that under there for the moment. And this is the best way, of course, to tell because then you can adjust the colours accordingly. It looks quite nice. I need to stand back and have a look. Well, that looks quite nice, doesn't it? I'm not certain about the silver edge. But actually, it doesn't make a bad frame on that, and it shows what you can do with uh, ordinary materials. So I think we'll call that one complete in that frame. And, uh, and there you go, a nice way to produce a budget frame for yourselves. Well, there we are then. Um, matter of 20, 25 pounds, we've turned out a nice frame that would have cost me about 80 or 90 otherwise, and I think suits the painting because we've made the colours to match. So what I have to do now is just spring the clips up behind it. I can just lift it with a knife and swing them around. And there we have our quickly adjustable homemade frame. 
doing its job and voila our frame which I hope you'll be happy with and I think it works quite well. Thank you.